Hey guys, Subotsum here. We get 7 returning stages in Splatoon 30 on release, but not everything seems to be the way how we remembered it. I took a deep look at what's changed and why some stages seem rather untouched, some are drastically different, that they could be entirely new stages on their own, if not for the returning setting. I will point out every big change, so I will not go over every tiny box that changed. Also keep in mind that all of the stages shown so far were captured in Turf War and between the modes there can be significant differences in the layouts with different paths and walls added. If you like the content please consider to subscribe. So without further ado let's jump right into it. Mai Mai Resort has probably changed the most. The spawn shifted more to the center and they added more space in front of them to get rid of the long alley leading up to the spawn that was very easy to spawn camp. The layout here is pretty simple with some elevations and ramps added to have a balanced spawn area, which is a good change. The mid sections changed a lot as well. It mostly resembles the tower control layout from Splatoon 1 with the three tower-like structures in the middle. The small floating platform from Splatoon 1 Turf War got removed. The water levels change once again, which fill all of the holes of the map this time around. The sides are way less complex and they got rid of most of the islands, only three remain. They seem pretty far away from each other, but they might be reachable using this little block here. All the islands get fully integrated into the map with the lowering water level this time around. Before, in Splatoon 1 there were several ways to get into the spawn area, but this time around they simplified the way with two broad entry points that you can walk in before the water drops, but after the water drops you need to use these jump pads from the single player to get in. You've never seen them before on any multiplayer stage, so I'm very curious how people are going to play around them in competitive matches. They also added some sponges to give the defending team faster access to the high ground, which is smart map design in my mind. Overall, I feel like they streamlined the map a little bit, which is fine though, since Splatoon wants maps designs. They're all over the place and could lead to very dysfunctioning areas on the map. The stage keeps its gimmick, but it's tuned down a little bit. I feel like in mid it will play pretty similar to before. When it comes to pushing deeper into the enemy spawn though, I think this map will feel completely new. Let's get to Hammerhead Bridge. Obviously most of the crates are gone, which removes a lot of the verticality. The basic layouts of the crates and the ramps are still there though, as you can see here. The crates were the most defining feature, creating two separate levels across the whole map, which was pretty unique. Below where you could ink, and above where you could only walk. With removing the crates, a lot of the vantage points are gone, and a lot of cover too. The map feels incredibly open, before it was rather claustrophobic. They removed most of the parts left to the center of the map, and it's also not possible anymore to get up onto the higher platforms on that side. The small path to the right of the spawn got wider, and the last part is also made into a grate, adding a much needed vantage point. In general, the whole spawn area got wider once more, combating spawn camping. The big court halfway to the spawn is still present, but they removed all the walls around it, making it completely open as well. That's kind of the theme of this rework. At least they added some huge pillars that give some cover across the map. We also got to see some Raymaker footage, where one of the giant pillars are gone to make room for a checkpoint, effectively removing even more cover. It seems like pushing up the ramps is the only way to advance on this map, before there were small, more risky parts on the sides, which I can't spot on the footage. In general, I feel like they only loosely based the layout on the original and took a lot of freedom to revamp the map, but for me it's kind of losing its identity. Barely any grades and the verticality is gone. The map is pretty long and narrow and reminds me a bit of an open walleye warehouse, which was not the greatest stage design. We got to see how it feels to play this map after all. We've seen Museum Dalfonsino before, but we can't analyze that footage anymore since they changed up the stage. So I'm just gonna use direct footage here. They got rid of the rotating platforms in spawn and added some additional ramps and elevation. The spawn was already pretty broad so they didn't widen it like the others, but in general the spawn design is pretty smart since it gives the spawning team a high ground and multiple options to push out from, which makes spawn capping way less annoying and effective. Also obviously you need a broader spawn for the new jump spawning as well. The mid area is pretty similar, the rotating platform is a bit lower and now connects perfectly with the neighboring platform. The rotating platforms now stop more abruptly but are unchanged otherwise. They added an obstacle here for more extra cover and also added a weird uninkable see-through platform right here above the water. I'm not sure what purpose it serves since it doesn't offer a way to get on the platform above it. The high ground here next to the spawn got changed up a bit and is now a bit bigger and better accessible. They also removed the wall so the high ground can now be used by long range weapons to pressure mids. Overall this is my favorite remake, the map keeps its identity, they added a couple of things and the changes are smart. Flounderhide next. There's not much to say about the map yet. It looks identical, but they just lowered the overall height of the map. It kinda looks like a squashed down version compared to the old one. 
The splits in two maps are mostly unchanged from the footage we've seen, so there's not as much to go over compared to the Splatoon 1 remakes. Makomat is exactly identical. It might look weird to some who have only played the ranked modes, but besides being wider is the same in Turfo and Splatoon 2. The rails are back as well. The only thing changed is they extended this platform right next to the spawn to give the spawn a bit more high ground. On Inkput I could literally not find any changes despite visual ones. They unfortunately got rid of the Da Vinci jellyfish drawing. So press F in chat guys. I hope they're gonna change something about the side of this map though. But we barely have any footage so we don't know yet. Sturgeon Shipyard got a bit more footage since it was used in the Spetfest part of the Direct, but unfortunately we can't use that footage for the analysis as well, since they had to change the map up for the tricolor turf war anyway, and these changes are not here on the regular version. Here I could not find any changes as well, despite for this block being slightly bigger, but these three returning Splatoon maps are the best designed ones anyway, if you ask a big portion of the community, so no need to change anything here. And lastly we have Wahoo World, which is not as well liked as the previous 3 Splatoon 2 maps, but that didn't make them change much of the map as well. On Turf War, they rotated these walls a bit further back into the circle, but that's about it. On other modes in Turf War, they could add a sponge or a bounce pads right here at the part of the map to access the high ground more easily. That would go a long way to change how the map plays completely, since a lot of the map here can't be contested well, and that might make the map way better for a lot of people. That's it for my analysis on everything that's changed in returning stages. Did I miss anything? How do you feel about these changes? I've made plenty of more analyses about the Direct if you can't get enough of Splatoon 3 like me. Also don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. With that being said, have a good one, see you around guys, Watson out.